What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a super rad project for you guys today. I was scrolling through the old interwebs on the Instagram running across this cat named Lucas D'Angelo. It's a man made in MA. I'm gonna put all his links and stuff in the description of his YouTube channel. Go check him out. Make sure you guys subscribe to his channel and, and leave down in the comments that you saw us on AC Design of the Garage. But dude come up with this rad idea. I don't know why we didn't come up with this. I mean, he used a simple engine hoist, cherry picker, engine snatcher whatever you guys call it he used this thing to basically turn his truck into a tow truck lift heavy objects i don't have a tractor i'd love to have one but like we're moving let's get you spunked around here me and dad was taking this engine out of the 72 chassis to put in the patches we had to finagle this thing around pulled around a lawnmower took like two hours to get it ready this tool here would have done it in no time i mean we can hook it to the truck jack it up and drive around the yard so I'm going to show you how super easy it is. I'm so glad I stumbled upon it. This is going to be such a great tool. It's going to be such an easy build for us. And I uh, appreciate it, Lucas. I talked to him. Super cool cat. But yeah, we're going to get to it. All thing you're going to need, guys, is a welder, a drill, and a cutoff wheel, and a receiver. I got this receiver right here. This is the big mama right here. It's a. Uh, Got it off of Amazon. I'll link this uh, in the description. It's a two inch by 12 inch uh, trailer receiver. And that's what we're gonna weld in here. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. But I'm gonna link all this stuff on uh, on Amazon through my affiliate account. It don't cost you guys any extra. It's just helps the channel out a little bit on qualified purchases. So if you wanna check it out, all this stuff's gonna be in there. So let's get the arcing and the sparking and cutting this unit up. And let's see if we can make a tow mater out of my truck. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you what we're working with. Like I said, it's just a regular old engine hoist that we've had forever. And uh, really, all you gotta do is uh, make that go through there. And uh, a few other little things, so make sure you stay to the end. We're gonna see what all we can destroy and pick up with this thing. But yeah, it's just a regular old engine hoist. It's, it's uh, nothing fancy. But I'm gonna show you how to how to do it and uh when you use it you take these off so you're gonna have to have one of the models and i guess all the newer ones so for these front legs unpin you just take these off because this section here is going to go into the back of your truck but yeah just make sure you got the model i know the older ones didn't unpin like that and i i don't guess you can this is getting away of it but yeah yeah gotta have the ones that unpin so i'm gonna get her set up on some jack stands and we'll start laying out our cuts and I'm going to show you, I've got a plasma cutter could do this, but I know some of you guys don't have plasma cutters. So we're just going to do it with a drill and get this thing fit tight and buzz her on in there. Here we go. All right, guys, here's a few little things that you're going to need, uh, and you don't need separate tools. You can do this with like a, a Dewalt or whatever, a four-inch angle grinder, electric angle grinder, and just a flat wheel and a cutoff wheel. You just need some way to cut this hole out. If you got a plastic cutter, you can do that, but I'm just going to do this with like tools that most of you guys probably have. A square, a good sharp area of Milwaukee. All right, guys, this is the receiver we bought. It's a two-by-two. Two. It's two-inch ID, which is inside diameter. And uh, you're gonna need, that's your receiver, and you're gonna need a piece of square tube steel here that's two inches outside diameter. Uh, this is quarter wall, that means that's a quarter inch thick, quarter inch wall thick, and what this does is it'll receive the tube. It will slide inside it. And I'll show you what this piece for, and then we're gonna, we got a little scrap piece I'm gonna have to do a little grinding on. But basically, it's gonna go up here and weld on here and it's just going to support that receiver and we'll weld it to it and i'm going to show you how i'm going to do that but first off we're going to get laying this thing out real quick i'm going to try to center it and uh since these corners are so round on this receiver i'm going to find a drill bit that is about the right radius for that and we'll just drill four corners and then go in there with the cutoff wheel and cut the four corners out of here drill 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 cut four corners out backside and do it so this should be a pretty quick fast project that's going to save us a lot of backbreaking work sometimes it gets kind of hard when you don't do this a lot like say it's 33 and a, a quarter 33 and 5 sixteenths or something you want to find the dead middle of it so this tube is 33 and a half inches wide 
You just take it and put it down there at the bottom where it touches right here. And you look at the very top of this and it's looking like it's gonna be 16 and three quarter. That's just a quick way. You just double your tape over to the bottom like that and put it on what it needs to be and it's 16 and three quarter. So we're gonna check. All right, 16 and three quarters. Just flip it over and measure the other way. 16 three quarters, so that's, that's our dead center. So now we're gonna find the center of the tube. It's another one of the weird ones. I'm gonna show you how to do it this way. Get her on the end so I can really see. Okay, this is three and a half. So half of three is an inch and a half. Half of a half is a quarter. So inch and three quarter. Yep, inch and three quarter. I can figure it out every now and then. All right, there's our dead center this way, this way. Basically, we're gonna lay out a hole. So, Two and a half by two and a half. So you might see smoke coming out of my ears because I'm having to think. So two and a half. And this is three and a half. So that tells me two and a half and three and a half is an inch difference. So we'll take a half off the top, half off the bottom, right? Help me out here. Don't leave me hanging. All right, so we're gonna go. It's all rounded tube. Sometimes you gotta pull something off like this to find the very edge of it. So Right here at the end, I can't see because I'm blind. So I'll, go, I'll move it up to the one. Let me get y'all in here where y'all can sit there. Uh, yeah. yep. oh. Now I'm just going to overmark this. Getting too many marks on here, people. Okay. I'll do that. Now we know which mark to go. I'll fish right here. So this is gonna be that's two and a half. So half of two and a half would be an inch and a quarter. So there it is. There's my two and a half. There's my two and a half. Inch and a quarter. You put your halfway on your inch and a quarter. Mark that, mark that. It's two and a half. Let's see. I'm gonna put that here. Yeah. Alright, let's square this puppy off. All we gotta do since we got a square edge up here, just come down here and drop that off. And we'll mark it to do the outside line. I want just a little bit of room. So I just do these little V's right here to know to which side of the line to cut on. Because if you'd want to mark the inside, because I just want a little bit of wobble room because I'm probably not gonna get it drilled perfectly straight and square. So hold this thing up here. It's gonna be her right there. Heck yeah, son. So let's get in there. We're gonna we're gonna check this radius right here with a drill bit and find out what one has that nice radius to it and get at it. Alright guys, if you ain't got one of these drill index boxes, these are the trick. Because if you need to know a, a bolt for you can stick a bolt down in here and figure out what size hole you need to drill if you want it real tight and stuff. These things are just easy. We keep our good drills in here. And we got all those drill doctor stuff sharpening them, but that works really good. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the radius of this thing. So I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you how I find the radius. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the drill up to it like this and see which one is has the same, just the outside corner that's really all you're wanting. So let's check this big one. We've got to pre-drill these because you don't wanna try to drill them with the big ones starting off. I think it's Big Mama. So this one here seems to be, this is a half inch. Probably go just a skosh bigger. If we need it just a hair, we got one of them, some people call them Christmas tree bits, those step drill bits, we might use one of them. But I think this one here is gonna be good. So 
I'm going to basically put, to know where the center of this is, I'm just going to lay this back here on this back corner and draw it. That way it's not too big and we'll, uh, we'll get us a little drill through first, probably a uh, 3 sixteenths or 8th or something like that. And then we'll step up to Big Mama here and then we'll try her out. There we go. All right, guys, what I was talking about is we're going to take this as the, the half inch drill. If I can get it out of here. And we're going to lay it right here to where it touches this outside mark and this outside mark. I'd change out my Milwaukee to a newer one. You want a fairly, fairly sharp point here. And we're going to put it on the outside of that, outside of that. That'll give us just a little bit more room. That's basically where we're going to drill them at. So the way I'm going to find the center, that's a half inch, so half of a half is a quarter. So we'll put this on that line right there. Bump the quarter. That should be pretty close to center. Like I said, this is not this is not drilling a lug pattern on a car. This is just trying to show you some neat little ways to get this done. If you don't have one of these little spring-loaded uh, center punches, I just got this one at Harbor Freight. You just push it against it a couple times. Man, it makes it a whole lot easier instead of having to try to hit them. It makes it lines up easier and stuff. So I like these things. I suggest getting one of these if you can. So we're just going to go to the center of that little X I did. I like to do it good three times. Three for Dale. If you know, you know. I use Rapid Tap. They don't come in these balls. I get these balls off of Amazon, but Rapid Tap cutting fluid or WD-40 or anything like that will work pretty good. You just want to keep your drill cool. That way it'll cut better and it won't lose this sharpness. But remember, we're going to try to keep this drill as level as we can. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab a little torpedo level just to see if we can level off of that. Just use one of these. You don't have to have this, but I'm going to see if it'll work. I think I can lay it on top. We'll get started just a little. And you can take your little level and sit on it. About right in there. I'm not gonna leave it on, I'll just check it every now and then. Now your level is not gonna be as important right now on this, but when we go through to the other side, that's where, and I'm probably gonna I don't know if y'all guys are going to be able to see. I'm going to have to get where I can push on this good. But this is how we're going to level. And I'm going to go ahead and go through. So throw your torpedo level on top. Try to get it as square and level as you can. Get that bubble to the middle. Man, these, these 20 volt batteries die on you guys much? I'm gonna grab another one. They just don't last long for some reason. We might go to the old plug in. I don't know. We'll see. We'll go get a battery. All right, we upgraded to the, the little bit bigger battery. It seems to hold up a little longer. It's a three amp or whatever that thing is. Three amp hour battery. I don't know what it is. Get this going again, re-leveler. Looks good. We were pretty close, wasn't we? thing was fully charged. I'm getting the cord. 
This is getting annoying. All right, we switched over to the old Black & Decker. And I know somebody's gonna see the little bit of uh, electrical tape down here. It's not no wires or broke or bare, just the old insulation starting to get a little dry and cracked out. And this drill is probably older than most of you guys watching this thing. But this is an awesome drill. So that's what we're gonna use now. She ain't gonna die unless the power cuts out, so. Got off on that in a little bit. You'll be alright. Yep. This why I was caught about a step bit here. These things go, this one goes up to like seven eighths, I think is what it goes. It has the, uh, I don't know if you can see the right in there or not, but it has the different size. And that's what this tape was on here for. If you got a certain size you want to go to, just put your piece of tape on. The size really don't matter on this. I'm just trying to get it to that radius. So we're just going to pop it through till it hits the lines where we want it. There we go, we'll just take our cutoff wheels, zap, 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 zap. Just gonna look and see about, that one's pretty big. And... It's gonna be pretty good all right guys i'm gonna link i'm gonna try to remember to link all this stuff i got so much stuff i'll link it but this is stuff i really believe in and use a lot this is a benchmark abrasives grinding shield not cool looking it's like darth vader or some paintball looking thing pretty rad it's got room for your respirator in there and stuff really comfortable and i like it it's real lightweight got a good adjustable comfortable headband i ain't sponsored by them but I like it. Just want to share stuff with you. So I'm going to get my safety stuff on and we're going to come in between here and cut these on both sides with the little uh, cut off wheel. We grab it. Especially with these wheel of deathers here that, uh, that's what I call them. I need to get some better cut off. You want them as thin as possible. And uh, these things work great, but you got to be careful because these things get bound up. They will stick in your face. They will stick anywhere they want to. This one's okay. It's going to take a while to cut. It's just not as good as like the 3Ms I usually use. That's all we got left. And I didn't have time to go get none, but get your gloves and a good face covering shield on because I don't want one of these sticking in me. I've had friends that's had them break and cut them up pretty bad, so I tried my best to have some kind of face covering at least. Let's see if she fits. I think we're going to do a little trimming, but... Yeah, nah. There's a little gap in there, but that's good. That just means she's going to penetrate better. So, I'm going to cut the back side out. Y'all don't need to see that boring stuff. It's, these discs are horrible. Maybe I need to try out some of Benchmark's cutoff wheels or something. Those uh, little three-inch cutoff wheels but yeah these are horrible these things are old these are probably 40 year old cutoff wheels and they're glazed over i guess and they just 
I think they burn their way through more than a cut, but yeah. We could have took our time a little more and, and got more precise fit, the press fit, but for this application, I don't care. It's a, uh, it's good enough. It'll work good. Plus, we'll get us a little, uh, a little more penetration in there for a good strong weld. So. Pretty square right there. Yeah, guys, that's basically what she's gonna look like. That's pretty cool, ain't it? I got a little bit of a gap in here in some places and stuff, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, now I'm gonna clean up this little, this little piece right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it in here and uh, butt it up against that back piece and spot it on and pull this out. And uh, then weld this on and slide this back here. And I may put a Drill a couple holes and do a rosette weld or something on it. But before I forget that, I'm going to have to figure out a way to pin this other piece here. Because this piece here will go in here. And this will slide into the receiver on the truck. So, trying to figure. Just drill straight through all this. And pin it. I don't know. I want to make sure I got enough stuck it back in the truck. So... Yeah, we'll try that. See how she is level wise. Like the boot. Yeah, that's basically her right there. We'll have to pop a hole for the one in the truck and then pop a hole in this one. So we're going to get that took care of before we weld it. Chamfer. See how she does. Yes, sir. We can. All right, guys. We got our pen. I'm gonna uh, cut this one off. It's a little long, and uh, we're probably just gonna drill a hole and put one of them little quick connect pins in it. But basically, what this will do, this has nothing to do with the. Uh, this coming in and out, we're going to weld this on. When we slide this in, it, this will just make something where we can release this. So when we're using as a regular cherry picker, engine hoist, or whatever, we can pull this out so there's nothing to trip over and it works good. But I pulled it out. There's a little gap here I'm not worried about. I just need this done pretty quick because I need to use it. Uh, we're just going to weld it good. It'll get good penetration weld front and back. And uh, we'll get that other piece put back there, the rosette weld in here. And... This thing should be strong. We'll get this done. I'm going to go gnaw on a bean real quick and come back and we'll get the arc and the spark and get this unit finished up. All right, guys, we're back from lunch and uh, we're going to get back started on this thing. I'm going to go over here on the porta band and cut the little piece that goes up against the front that the receiver is going to slide on and kind of support it a little bit. So I'm going to show that to you. I'm only going to need like a probably a four inch piece.
All right, guys, this is basically how this thing is going to go. Knock that pin in right there, and uh, I'm going to take it back apart and clean this out around here. And this piece here will weld to here, and then we're going to weld this to that, so it just kind of just ties it in because we didn't have enough. Because this uh, 12 inches is the longest one I could find, and I was like, well, shoot, we can do this. Dad came up with this idea here to run it up here, and we'll just move that up there and weld that, and weld it to here, weld it here, and weld it here. And that unit there should be strong. And then uh, the other one, this one down here, we'll have to drill a hole in it for that pin because that pin will just pull out of this. And that will, we got to drill a hole in this. We actually had to drill two, one for the truck and one for this. But this will go in probably about that far there. And we'll have to drill the hole. And then we'll have to drill one this way because this piece right here is what goes into the hitch of the truck. And we'll uh, go out there and mark that and drill that. But yeah, that should be strong. Then when we're done, we can uh, we can just pull this out and make a little stand for it on here or something and, and leave this pin in. There we go. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out cool. I'm pretty excited. I, there's a lot of stuff that I think we're going to be able to use this for. So I'm going to get these areas marked over here and clean that rusty piece up and get ready to start burning it. We're going to make sure it's square in there and level as we can get it. I mean, within reason. It is what it is. Yeah, it's going to be rad. Can't wait. pretty good right there a little bit of gap for my table shifted on me but ah, we can fill that up we can lay some dimes in there just stack them in there and we'll check this here it's good and square I might be able to put me a wedge under the bottom here maybe to pick it up some yeah, that's pretty close. It just moved it on the stand. It's got that little bit of slop in the pin parts there, so we're gonna call that level enough. Level snuff. All right, I think we're at the moment now of welding this thing. So we're gonna drag the old Millermatic 185 out and I'm gonna burn her in there real quick, unless any of y'all have any objections. But I think it's pretty good and ready. Get a little quick walk around for you. Do it. Oh, that's ready. I can keep this pin in here and that'll help keep that located. And yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of gap down here, but we can bridge that no problem. That's probably an eighth inch or so. But we'll weld up through here around this and go out here and weld around that. And I think I'm going to come in here and put some angle. I may weld it first and then put some angle in that just to give it a little, a little more brace than it actually needs. And we'll weld it slowly so we don't warp anything because this. gonna get it tacked real quick. We're gonna check for level and square one more time and then we're gonna start burning in. So I'm gonna go tack around all the places in four quadrants. That's what I like to do on every corner. And we'll go back and check it. If we need to move it, we can. Just don't start burning in on it because if you're like me, you might mess up something. I'm gonna make sure the pin is in a good loose position right there. It's not in a bind and then we're gonna start welding.
All right, guys, we'll cut a couple pieces of angle we're gonna put in on the sides of that just to brace it up a little more. I'm gonna throw them on there, get them tacked, and I'll bring you over and uh, show you, and we'll just burn that unit in. I cut these three and a half, I think that was the length of the top, so we'll get a good weld all the way around on them, and uh, this thing ought to be pushed out. Let's get at it. We got the C clamps on her, and uh, we're fixing to start tacking the rest of this angle in. I just thought it'd give us a lot more surface area to weld and tie it out a little bit wider. So we'll get all this welded up nice and pretty and call her done. Yeah. We'll let her cool down a little bit before I finish. Don't want to warp you, warp you. Finally, we got one that laid down good. Let her cool, she's getting a little warm now.
the one on the top. Let's try to make this look the best, I reckon. Not bad, not bad. Alright guys, I just took this. Uh, this is the piece that goes in. I'll show you real quick. This goes in. Pull my pin out. Got to go in there. What you do to locate your holes to get this hole exactly center is uh, what I did is I slid in. We're going to do it halfway. Basically the halfway length of it. There's the truck side over here, right here, and this is the one that goes in the top. So I just split this in half. This thing's about a foot or so long. I'll give you exact measurement. And then just take some spray paint and shoot right there, and that'll give your top, it'll give your top and your bottom just go up under it and spray it, and you can get it pretty close. We'll probably make it a little big to where we got a little adjustment back and forth. I did the truck one the same way, this one here. I just slid it in the receiver truck to some flat black paint, just squirted it a couple times and it'll give you give your hole instead of trying to figure it out, just makes it a little bit easier. We'll go ahead and use our little spring loaded center punch. We're gonna get as close to the center as we can. Three for Dale. That should be good. We'll do us a good starter bit first and we're gonna drill all the way through it. Cause this is good and level so it should indicate and go straight through that's the best way to do it if you can it is sometimes it's hard to get them lined up good if you uh just drill aside and flip it over so we're gonna try to drill all the way through if we can we have to raise it up i like to use these drill vices here drill vice however you say it they work good just give you something extra to hold on to support it too Man, that thing plowing through like hot knife through butter. Put a little more arrow on her. Keep that good sharp bit sharp. That thing goes awesome. Guys, we decided to step up to the unibit, step bit, Christmas tree, whatever you want to call them things. Them things work good. I think this is the Irwin brand. It goes up to a 7 8 at the top. We're going to stop right here at the bottom. Let me see what that is. 13 sixteenths, I think, is the hole we're going to use. So we're going to stop right there. But yeah, these things here work good. Now, this is a quarter inch. But man, this stuff will plow through this thing like ain't nobody's business. Just take your time with it, keep her earled up. Test it with her. Oh, we got a little bit. I think we're going our pins is a little bigger than this, so I think we're gonna be good on that one. All right, guys, here she is, that Christmas tree or step bed or whatever you want to call it. Done a number on that old quarter inch two by there. But I got it stamped here. You probably can't see it. A little T right there, that's for the top, so we know that that goes in that end. And uh, this is the side that goes in the truck here. So we're gonna slide this unit in and see how it works. Like I said, this is gonna be the removable piece that way. You're not tripping and knocking your shin bones and all that good stuff up. So I might weld later on, weld a little piece on here or something just to set this on, but that's should do. Get it lined up there. All right, now all we gotta do is jack this thing up and this piece right here slides in the receiver on your truck and we ready to go. Yes, sir. Getting excited now. Trying to figure out what to name this unit. I just don't know yet. 
tow mater's already taken but hey drop down in the comments what you guys think we ought to name this thing and i'll just uh repaint her and hand letter her on the boom up there we might even keep it inside now, this old cylinder here's shot it's been outside forever we got a new cylinder but i'm not gonna fool with it right now i'm gonna try to see if this will pick it up but we're gonna probably see if we can pull patches of chassis out there and drag it around the yard see if it'll work like a tow truck i don't know we'll see if it breaks something we'll just fix it Check that out. Yes, sir. That's her right there. But make sure you put the boom down a little bit when you're moving around without them legs because it will get nose heavy on you. It's not too bad since we got this back here, though. It kind of had a little counterweight. Yeah. Check that out. And I'll hurt the worry. Now, if she just work, we'll be all right. So, there she is, guys. I'm waiting on the rainstorm to stop. We'll go start yanking stuff. All right, guys, we changed our setup up a little bit. We need a little more side to side support, so we just ran us some straps. If y'all can get up here and see that, just run some straps up into tie down areas, help support this thing a little bit better. Just hooked them at the top. She better, it's a lot less wonky, and you ain't getting all this tilt and stuff. So, we're gonna try that, see if it helps a little better. Now, we're gonna try to pull the engine and transmission out of it. That's what it really made for. I just want to be able to pull a motor up and haul out of a junkyard or whatever. So, test number two, test one went okay, but wasn't a win, I don't think. Maybe it was a lot better. Make sure they ain't pulling them out of bed. <laughs> That's gonna be a Well, looks like it was a success. Nothing broke. Not yet. Starting to worry about them straps a little bit, but I think they're going to be all right. We had to take a little tension off of them. But you can see, pulls it out pretty good. I think you could haul for a good ways with it. Maybe 100 foot. But yeah, I think that's a win. I'm, I'm glad we saw this thing. We could have used this a lot of times because 
that chassis over there is what this engine came out of. It was in the 72 and we had to he haul that thing around for about two hours to get it moved over here in the shop and we could just hook that unit right there up. Five minutes out, we drive around the yard, we need to move rear ends, whatever you need to do. Makes it a whole lot easier. I will say we need to put a new cylinder on it. She just don't got the gusto of it, but it's holding up good. Looks good. Ain't no flop to it. Like I said, I think you could go down to the junkyard and pull the engine if you need be. I call that a win right there. Got a little Carolina squat going, although I don't condone that by any means. But anyway, we got the back squatted down. That's probably, you write in the comments, guys. I don't know, it's probably what, five, six hundred pounds with the transmission stuff. That's 350, turbo 350. Yeah. I have to call that a win. I like it. We're going to use the mess out of it. I uh, may do some modifications like the new cylinder and stuff. And like Dave was talking about, we may put the legs back on it. If you're going to haul anywhere to stick out, put a board and we'll just kind of let the pressure down on it so it don't swing as much. But it actually moves around pretty decent as long as it ain't rocking if you can figure out a way to stabilize it. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that little video on building this. Make sure you go try building it. It's pretty cool. Just uh, be careful with it anytime, especially like these straps going in the bed back here. Uh, you get them a little too tight, they start pulling a little bit. So just leave them just a little loose there for stabilization. I'll hold it up, but check that thing out. We full blown redneck record service now. Look at that. But yeah, hope y'all enjoyed it. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.